Hey there, starlings. Welcome to my sector of the universe. This is Jess from Capella Wellness, here to help you step into your truth and star into your power. For those of you who have never been here before, welcome. Thank you so very much for being here for the first time. For those of you who are returning, thanks for coming back to watch another one of my readings. I'm glad you are here too. All right, guys. Happy October. Uh, this is pretty crazy. We are in the month of October. I actually, there are a lot of birthdays in my family for the month of October. We just celebrated one. Uh, his, my, um, grandfather, maternal grandfather's birthday. His 89th birthday is the 2nd of October. It's actually his birthday now as I'm recording this because it's already past midnight. We already had his 89th birthday party this past Saturday. So blessings to him. And everyone else who has a birthday in October, if you do have a birthday in October, happy birthday to you. If you are a Libra, happy birthday. Because <laughs> I know all, not all birthdays in October are in the sign of Libra. All right, so guys, we're going to check in on the weekly energies for the week of October 2nd. We're going to get some guidance from Holy Spirit and the Archangels to see how to best navigate these energies, um, what your wellness tip of the week is, your affirmation of the week, and anything else God wants us to know about. I do have a deck that's usually a love deck, a love oracle deck here, so we'll pull a card on uh, checking some love energies, and maybe love will come out in this reading anyway, because it sometimes does, or usually does. And yeah. That's what we'll be doing for this week. So uh, keep in mind, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. For somebody else who may be watching this, there may be like one line that may be said in this reading that can pertain to you and your situation. Also know that whatever greatness comes out of this, you know, like money, union, things like that, you have to be in alignment with it. Okay, alignment is everything. This is helping you to get in alignment with your heart's desires, what you're really, really seeking um, in your sector of the universe. And don't forget also that whatever comes through here is me channeling the divine. God, the archangels, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Mary Magdalene, all of those wonderful entities, guides, whatever you want to call them, they are the ones who speak through me. I am the messenger. All right. Okay, guys, they're ready. Let's see what guidance we have for this week. Holy Spirit, Archangels, Galactic Families, Pleading Syrians, Jesus, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, Ascended Masters, please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity. I totally feel the energy changing here. It's like things are going to be really shifting in October. It's eclipse season, guys. Our first one is a solar eclipse on the 14th of October. The lunar eclipse is the 20th of October. That happens to be my mother's birthday. <laughs> so, yeah, guys. Uh, massive, massive changes. There's still five planets in retrograde. The outer planets. You've got Pluto, I think, coming into, going direct at the in this month. I forgot to check on that. Okay. There we go. Lots of stuff, guys. Lots of stuff going on. So October can, can very well be a hugely life-changing month for a lot of you. And we have the Hermit. We have Major Arcana here. And this is Virgo energy. You may be a Virgo. You may be dealing with a Virgo. Or you have strong Virgo in your chart like me. Okay. So the guidance for this week is to really go to chem class and concoct something that is going to be life-changing. And <laughs> that's what they told me to say. Because he's like in chem lab, right? He's working on potions and things like that. There's a toad, a frog. If you're seeing frogs, that's a huge sign for you. And I know one, at least one of you here, you know what I'm talking about. Because the frogs are coming up again. Black cat, all right? Independence. Esotericism. I see the Queen of Wands with that black cat because the black cat isn't the Queen of is in the Queen of Wands card in the Major Arcana. I'm sorry, in the Minor Arcana. Um, we have a lot of things here. Jack o' Lantern. There's the brain here. There's a silly picture of him back here. There is like some sort of claw coming out of his pocket, right? He's got this. Um, um, again, I was saying he's creating this potion, and I forgot what this is called. It's not a beaker. It's uh, not a flask. Wow. It's not a pipette either. I lost it. I used to know this stuff in chem class, but it doesn't matter. Uh, mortal and pestle here. 
This is you being able to create change, okay? And yes, this is the hermit card, but because I channel intuitively and I'm getting stuff off of the pictures, all right? The skull is here. There's something about utilizing your brain. You're gaining knowledge. So the hermit in, in, in tarot is Socrates, right? It's a Socrates card for me. Know thyself. All right. So when you're soul searching and you're really looking within this week, you're going to start to find some answers to why you're going through certain things or why you went through certain things, the relationships you had, the childhood that you had, um, why your relationships really didn't pan out, why you struggled a lot with speaking your truth or hiding in a corner or you felt like you needed to control everything or you, you realized that you had to control every little thing due to fear. It could be a lot of things because the shadow side of this, guys, is paranoia. Okay, it is kind of like being so completely introverted and hiding away from the world because you're afraid of something going wrong. Like you don't want to step outside because you think you're going to get hit by a car, you'll get a disease or whatever that is, right? That's pure paranoia and you don't want to get outside of your house and it's just like, I can't leave here because this, this, this and this. No, if that's you right now, uh, that could only be for one person is what I'm hearing. Um, do you... I, your guides are asking you to really go within and ask yourself why you're so paranoid, why you're so fearful. Because with this here, the skull, the brain coming out of the pumpkin, all right, this is a brainiac. Like he's got the, the lab coat on. He looks very attentive to what he's doing. He's knowledgeable about stuff. But what he's doing here is he's it's almost like in the temperance card. When I say finding the magical elixir of life, you're it's like chem lab, guys. I mean, you're mixing it's mixology. Maybe some of you, somebody's a mixologist. I don't know. Somebody likes to make drinks or potions, but whatever. Anyway, it's like putting one drink, one thing into another. But in chem lab, you're having these liquids, right? And you 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 get the set of instructions. But if you know anything about chem lab, one slightly different measurement could botch the whole thing. Trust me, I've had a lot of chem labs where I was like 0.01 off of something and I would get marked for it. Like I would get docked, right? And it's like, oh my God. And I thought I was being meticulous, very careful. That is Virgo energy, all right? But there's a reason for this because if you know anything about chemistry, when you have one thing just a little bit off, it can really mess up something, especially if you're doing something like, uh, I don't know, it could be um, uh, antifreeze even. It could be uh, a drink, okay, like an energy drink because, you know, because if you got stuff that's off, it's going to kill people. Um, you can have skincare creams or lotions or um uh, eye drops or, or, you know, anything with liquid in it, right? It com it's comprised of different elements, right? And if you don't have the right levels of something, it could totally go wrong, all right? So if you're looking at this analogy here with Chem Lab, uh, you actually used to love Chem Lab, believe it or not. I was a huge nerd growing up. I really, really, really was. I loved anything that had to do with science. So, <clears throat> and mathematics, I, I'm telling you guys, huge nerd over here, okay? I am a huge aficionado of math and science. Give me calculus problems, I will do them for fun. Anyway, let's move on. I'm not kidding. Anyway, so you get what I'm saying, right? So when you're going into hermit mode and you're looking within, it's like, okay, let me see what it was that I did in my life or the patterns I was doing that made my potion blow up. Because we all know when you put certain chemicals together, or you put the wrong measurements, the, 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 the glass can break. Um, the, uh, the, the equipment can break. It could blow up in your face, right? Explosions, that type of thing. Start looking into your life this week and saying, what, what, what mix was I using to cause eruptions, to cause explosions, to cause my beaker to break, my pipette to just explode, whatever. The Bunsen burner just catches on flames. <coughs> you know what I mean? Go with it and ask yourself these questions, guys, because here's the thing. When you do this analysis, Virgo is analysis, straight analytics, okay? getting the details, but this is more doing the analysis and details about your life. When you're doing the soul searching, 
what did I do to cause this explosion? What did, what happened? What was I doing? What were the family members? Um, what was my family life like? If it could, listen, there's a lot coming through right now, but this is what I did. When I went into Herman Mo, God took everyone and everything away from me. I quit my career. God took my friends, not that in that way. He removed my friends from me, all these other people that I used to know, okay, one by one or groups, <coughs> group by group. And God wanted me to get into isolation, into pure solitude mode, to really get closer to him, to get the answers, to better understand myself and who I really am, what my purpose was, why I went through everything that I did. And my world was quiet. God kept me away to save myself, to save me from other dark energies, other people's lower vibrational energies. Because when you have negative energy around you, lower vibrational people, and the world is in chaos or whatever, it's harder for you to really go within and really gain some clarity as you're searching for your own answers, but you search for them when you have a relationship with God. And no other interference can surround you because it affects your energies to the point of gaining that clarity while you are in this mode, okay? So um, this was a huge thing for me, especially in relationships. I went from one relationship to the other and I didn't heal from them. And I ended up finding myself in unfulfilling relationships until God said, enough. I want you to be single. And I've been single for years, okay? This is the longest I've ever been in my life since college. I had my first boyfriend in college, okay? I did not have any committed relationships before then. That's not a joke. Go ask my family. My first boyfriend was in college and I only had, I only dated, I only had like five real relationships. My fifth one, I believe, was my marriage. And then maybe a little one after that and that was it. And God said, no more of this. I want you to be by yourself. I really want you to better understand who you are, why I put you here, what your purpose was. And I started to, what they say, find yourself, right? This is the thing with the hermit card. The person you've been searching for is you. The thing that you've been searching for, your happiness, it's you. You bring in your own happiness. You are the one you should be getting into alignment with your higher self to find fulfillment. When you're looking within yourself to find that concoction, that perfect, the perfect measurements of those liquids, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I was doing just fine before I did this. It always happens when I'm trying to channel the truth here. So you start saying, okay, let me get my chem stuff out. Let me start seeing, analyzing these things, writing things down. Details. Doing the analysis. Oh, I put too much of this into my life. I gave too much of this. I took too much of this, right? I was afraid of this. I was whatever. It can be whatever, guys. But the hermit is for us to better understand why we go through the things we do, why we have the relationships we have, and why we seem to be unfulfilled. I also see the hermit card as a fall from grace. And this is not to be insulting to anyone because at some point in our lives, a fall from grace tends to lead us into this hermit mode, right? I say that because usually with the hermit, they can lose everything. Or things start to fall apart or it's like, what is happening here? It's like a culmination of tower moments and you're trying to see the light in it, but you can't fully do that because you're in a negative environment. You're surrounded by negativity. You're surrounded by your own negativity, these false belief systems until God has to come in with a massive tower to get you to do a course correction, reroute you and say, hey, 
I need you to get into this solitary mode, go into your cave to better understand why this is happening. And this also tends to you with, with this also comes with facing your fears. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I say that. <clears throat> Don't mind me, guys. It's because the enemy, I'm, I was about to say darkness here. The enemy always tries to attack my throat chakra. Because that's the best way they can try to get me to not do these things. What I was going to say is I say darkness, like death card, because he's doing this in nighttime. We can tell. There's stars out there. Are you afraid of the dark? That was a Nickelodeon show that I absolutely loved. Anyway, that might be resonant for somebody. Hermit, in the Rider weight, he's in the dark. There's not much light in that picture except for what is in his lantern. But he has to go through the darkness to see the light. He has to have the fall from grace to understand why he's got himself to that point. Because remember, we, cause there are consequences of our actions, correct? And when we understand this, but the, the, the knowledge gained here, the wisdom gained, because this is a sage, Right? Wisdom, sage. The last time I got the hermit card, I talked about somebody living on Learned Sage, a street. And I don't remember if it's Street Road or Boulevard. I think it's Learned Sage Road. But don't quote me. I know it's Learned Sage because Sage is coming out again. Anyway, there's a 36 in that house number. So <laughs> <coughs> we become much wiser when we do this, okay, a lot of people don't like to be single. They don't like to be extricated. They don't like to be shunned out, left alone. There's a difference between loneliness and being alone. I have learned to be happy alone and not be insanely lonely. Oh my God, I need somebody. I can't do this anymore. This is so, it's hard. Trust me, it's hard. But then you go within again, you ask yourself, why, why do I feel lonely? What is my thing with loneliness? How am I going to see that being alone is okay? I'm never alone. With the hermit, he has that wisdom knowing that he has his guides, his angels. Like he's surrounded by frogs and cats here. The stars are there. Your spiritual team is there. This is about achieving spiritual mastery. You becoming more of the spiritual world than you being defined by the religion that you grew up in, by what your parents taught you, your friends, your coworkers, society, right? You're starting to understand, you know what? I'm going through all this, but what is really the purpose? Oh, I got to face some fears. Oh, this is why I'm in these relationships. All Oh, okay. It's all coming back to me. I get to change the direct trajectory. I get to change my life and control the things that I can control. It's like the control variable, right? What am I going to base this off of? But you have to understand that you can't have full control of everything because at the end of the day, God has the ultimate plan. He always has the better plan. But what you got to do is better understand the mistakes you've made, the things that you wanted you to do, you didn't do, the things you did that you didn't want to do. There's a lot of wisdom that is gained when you really sit down. But I mean, really block yourself off. Maybe for this week, guys, you are to keep away from friends, family, whatever, get in your cave, in your room, some sort of sanctuary or go out in nature like a, a cliff on a hike or go to the beach and sit there and have a talk with God. When you're surrounded by higher vibrational energies and especially it's better when no people are around or you know you have the door closed and you put a sign out there, hey man, don't bother me. Get into this mode and start talking to God. God, help enlighten me here. This is an enlightenment card. Help me gain wisdom 
on certain things about my life, my relationships, my experiences. This is gaining wisdom through your life's experiences, your situations, your relationships. When I got into this mode and God said, okay, I'm taking everything from you. And this is also when I quit my career, everything was changing. And then I started to do my own analysis and said, oh my God. I started to realize that the guys that I was dating, they had a very similar characteristic. A lot of them had issues with their fathers. There was a strained relationship with their father. They didn't have a strong connection with their dad. And you know what? And this is nothing against my own father. Because I love my father dearly. However, I'm going to be completely honest. I had a strained relationship with my own father growing up. And this is nothing against my dad. Because after doing analysis much later on myself, when I came to that realization that I had issues, you know, it, it's not, people would call it daddy issues, but my dad was around in my life. But I never felt that he really was. And then because of that, I noticed that the relationship, the guys that I dated, to include the person that I married, they had strained relationships with their fathers, every single one of them. You see why hermit mode can be so enlightening? Give you wisdom. I'm like, oh my God. So then what did I have to do? I had to learn to be single. I had to learn to be happy on my own. I had to learn all these different things, but also better understand what was happening than me going back to realizing my connection with my own father and why that was. So there was a time that I actually interviewed my father while going through. I'm still in hermit mode, by the way. And I was like, Dad... I want to go over stuff about your relationship with your mom and your dad and the family members and your family history. I'm not going to say it here because it's not for anybody to know, but maybe some, if you work with me personally, it will come out because if I'm working with you one-on-one, -on -one, I will be able to share with you those things. Okay. But, um, when my dad explain to me certain things, I gained even more wisdom. I gained even more knowledge. And I started to find the right measurements of the right liquids to put into my equation, to put into my uh, um, magical elixir, so to speak. I'm not going to lie, guys. This is freaking bothering me the shit out of me. I cannot remember what the heck that is called. See, that's my Virgo kicking in because it's like it wants me to be perfect and get it right. And I have to pull myself away from that. Um, <clears throat> it's there in my brain, but my guides are like, don't worry about it, Jess. So I had to figure out what are the right, what am I looking here? Oh, look what my dad went through. So long story short, because of what I knew about my own father, it gave me a lot of clarity as to why he and I had that relationship. Now there's also karma there, okay? But it helped me to better understand my dad. Why? He wasn't the dad that I had wanted or I thought I wanted, or why I felt I wasn't as close to my father. Okay. But it's interesting because it's changing these days. It's changed quite a bit. But that's because I've grown a lot. I've learned a lot. And it's having a lot more compassion and understanding, right? And for some of you, this could literally be about your dad. Okay, it could literally be about your own father. And if that's the case, there's some father healing that you got to do. Others of you, you've been going through this. Some of you are starting to realize everything stemming back to my dad. Could even be your mom. Could be your childhood. Whatever this is. But this is why this is so important. 
because it helps to repair things. It helps you to find the right measurements of things so that they don't blow up in your face. So it's not, you know, it doesn't burn. It doesn't, you know, uh, it's not poisonous. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You're creating a healthy po po uh, potion, not poison. Uh oh. Um, I'm going to have to come back real quick. That is really scary that I said that and I need to go check on somebody. I'm going to have to merge these readings. So I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Something's going on. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. That was pretty interesting. Anyway, um... As I was saying, you're now creating these potions that are for your highest good, that are better for you. Um, more spiritual po potions, if you will, not ones of poison, right? So you're being asked to um, really start finding these things that are going to lead to a healthier, more fulfilled life, but more where it's you have God's involvement in it. Because when I do my mission work here, I am the one who teaches about you putting more God into your life. But this is your relationship with God, your personal relationship with God, how you and God work together. Because remember, what, what potions work for you don't work for somebody else. Okay, God's going to give you the measurements. He's going to give you the materials. He's going to tell you, no, you need to be putting this in a beaker, not in a flask. No, you need to be using these things, not those things, right? Because we remember in chem lab, you're not utilizing the same materials, the same liquids, the same measurements to create things, right? Everything has its own mixture of stuff. But that can only be determined when you are in connection with God, when you have your own relationship with God, and that can only fully be realized when you are full-fledged hermit mode, full-fledged solitude, okay? When you're really going deep within yourself and starting to say, I'm here now, why am I here now? Or where, where do I want to be? But what am I learning from where I have been to help me to get to where I need to go? And what liquids am I going to use? What materials am I going to use? What measurements, right? Do I need more love in my life? I got to put more of a love potion, create a love potion for myself. I don't know why it's just kind of about potions and stuff, but it is... Halloween season, okay? So this is this is great. Um, do I need more solitude in my life? Do I need more self-care in my life, right? Am I overindulging in this? Do I need to remove this? Put a little bit of this, more of this. Put a little bit of that, more of that. Less of this, more of that. You get the point. But this can only be realized when you are full connection with God. And again, when you really analyze your life's experiences, your relationships, your situations, your upbringing, blah, 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 you become a lot wiser. You become that sage. And then you utilize that wisdom, that knowledge gained to teach others. This is a spiritual guide, a spiritual teacher, all right? Someone who's done this already, right? You are going to go through this. And at some point, as part of your life's purpose, you are going to be teaching other people what you have learned, which is exactly what I am doing right now. And again, I'm hearing it again for a lot of you. This has to do with analyzing your relationships, especially the ones with your father. I'm getting that very strongly here, okay? 
you guys are smart. You're smarter than you think you are. But this is an excellent week to do some serious soul searching. Write it out if you need to. Start having a journal. Start right. Okay, here's an, here's an exercise for some of you here. Go back to your first rela your relationship with your mom, your relationship with your dad. Write out some good memories. Write out some not so bad memories. Write out some things that stick out to you. Okay, then start analyzing the relationship between your first boyfriend, your first girlfriend, whatever, your siblings even, okay? And see how they all connect. And start seeing what you need to put into your life more, what you need to remove. Get in your chem lab and start playing around to see what potions you need to make. To see what things you need to concoct and how much of this you need, how much of that you need. And start realizing things about yourself in the process. Um, <clears throat> I am getting an energy that this week, this might be your last week of solitude. <laughs> If you're single, this might be your last week of being single because you are already that sage because some of you are already being spiritual guides for others. You are already being spiritual teachers. You've achieved spiritual mastery. You're more, uh, you're, you have a lot more, um, you're more spiritual than you are religious. You've learned a lot during this downtime with your connection with God. You've built your relationship even stronger with God. And when in solitude, and I keep saying this when this comes out, God does his greatest work on you when you are in solitude. And when you do the healing on your own, when you do all the self-analysis, you know, self, self-discovery, you become a force to be reckoned with when God is ready to take you out of the cave, when God is ready to shunt you into your life's purpose fully so that you can share that wisdom with others. It's like what Jesus did with so many other people. Socrates, like you can go pick out so many people. Martin Luther King Jr., okay? So many other people. Even like, you know, people that you see on YouTube who've gone through things and they're here to be prophets. They're here to be spiritual teachers, spiritual guys. They're here to be teaching you something, whether it's spiritual or not. They're teaching you something. You become the student and then eventually the teacher. We all do this with each other, okay? But we're never learning because then you become both student and teacher. That's when you've achieved that mastery there. When you learn to win, you're not the teacher role, and then you are the student role, and whatever situations cause you to flip-flop between the two. When is it best to be the student? When is it best to be the teacher? Okay? So those of you who are ready the sage, a lot of you are a lot more wiser than your years show. Some of you are very young, but you have way more wisdom than those of you who are older than you, who've lived life longer than you. But you've done your hermit time. You've done your work. You could have come into this um, lifetime as an old soul. Some of you are old souls where you already had this wisdom and knowledge before you hit a certain age, before you were 15, before you were five, okay? Before you were 20, it depends. There are people who know way more, who have less experience in life than others because you've been blessed with that and you're teaching that to others. We're all here to teach and to learn. So some of you, you're coming out of this mode because you've already achieved this spiritual mastery. You've already been in hermit mode for years. You've already been by yourself for years. You've already 
You already have the potions that make your life fulfilling. You already know what you need more of, what you need less of. Why your relationships are where they were and how you're going to create the life or, do, or knowing who you are, what it is you want, what it is you don't want, what it is you like, what it is you don't like. Learning things about yourself. Oh, this enlightens me. Oh, this makes me feel happier. Oh, I didn't know this was going to be fulfilling. I didn't know that's what I wanted in a partnership. I didn't know that that's what I wanted in a relationship. I didn't know that's what my purpose was. Like for me, I have a, a bachelor's of science in computer science, okay? I'm not utilizing that technically right now. But those 18 years as a systems engineer and, and an intelligent uh, um, analyst and all these other things, I had to go through that to get myself to hear. Everything has its purpose. Everything has a reason. But you're there to learn something from it, whether it's good or bad, positive or negative. Either way, it's a learning experience. But the thing here is, you're to gain wisdom from it. Not just to get smarter from it. It's wisdom. They're two very different things. And when you're able to extract the gems of knowledge from those experiences in life, you're better off. And you see that everything's a learning experience. Every challenge, every non-challenge is a learning experience. And that's when you become strong in yourself. And you're a better example for others on how life should be. How happier life can be. How more fulfilling life can be. How more, much more balanced life can be. Some of you with this nine card here. Nines are about an important phase or cycle in your life is about to end. And that's why I said for some of you, this may be your last week or in a couple days time, you're no longer going to be kept in the cave. You're coming out of the cave. Because some of you, with the bottom of the deck is the six of ghosts. Ghosts are cups in this Halloween tarot deck. Okay? Look, there's a, this looks like a church to me. Which is why I was saying you become more spiritual than religious. And God is giving you that wisdom, what works for you, as opposed to what religion taught you or other people taught you. Because I've said before, what works for you doesn't work for everybody else in most cases. There's common denominators. God is the common denominator. But God knows us like the back of his hand. He created us. He knows all the hairs on our head, right? He knows everything about us. And that is why when it comes to religion and other things, tradition, certain traditions, it's not a one size fits all, ladies and gentlemen. You're either a small, medium, large, extra large, triple XL, whatever. Extra small, extra, extra small, <laughs> right? It's not a one size fits all. So that's why God wants us to get into this, to see what size we really are, to see what really works for us. Oh, I thought it was a small, but I'm really an extra small. Oh, I thought it was an extra large, but I'm really a medium. You see what I'm saying? But you can only find that out when you are alone with God and you go to God for everything and you seek him first for the answers to better understand who you really are, what your purpose is. To find your light and how you're going to shine that brightly to the rest of the world. So with the six of cups here, there's like reconciling with your past. Some of you, there's still forgiveness issues with regards to reconciling with your past. Which is why I was talking about this. Which is why I brought up a little bit about my analysis of my relationships 
and how some of that was going back to my own dad, right? I know for a fact, I signed up for something with my dad for, for us, both of us to learn. It's not just me, it's both of us. Better understand each other because we're different, right? Because I will be a size small and my dad is the larger size, right? But when we see that within ourselves, between each other and with other people in our lives, there's peace, there's harmony here. Sixes are about peace and harmony. We start to see the divinity in one another. And we stop looking at the sizes. We stop looking at the religious beliefs. We stop looking at religion, period. Oh, that makes them happy? Wow. Well, okay. That must be a good thing for them. This makes me happy? Okay, cool. But it's the thing about what makes you happy, what makes you fulfilled, what makes you feel enlightened, at peace. Not something that makes you feel icky, not something that makes you question things all the time, not something that makes you feel, oh man, you know what? I just don't feel right here. This doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't feel like it's feeding my soul. Right? And a lot of you probably had a lot of questions when you were kids when it came to religion. I know I did. I know some things didn't make sense. So what did I do? When God finally put me into this, I started asking God. I had some real downtime with God. They call something, this is called the secret place. Finding your sanctuary, whatever that is. For me, when I was in Maryland, it was out in nature. I did some serious soul searching on my hikes at Great Falls. That's where I gained a lot of wisdom there. And God used to speak speak to me very clearly during those moments. I would spend hours out there. I totally miss it because I'm not there now, but still. And I hiked by myself. There were only a few times where I hiked with my son, but the majority of my long hikes, and I, I'm telling you, hours, guys. There was one time I did a six-hour hike by myself, okay? Boy, was that enlightening. And God was revealing things to me that totally debunked stuff that I learned growing up Catholic. Now, I'm not knocking religion. I'm not knocking Catholicism. This is not what this is. I respect every religion, every denomination, whatever. Okay? Most of my family is still Catholic. I still respect that. But I learned through this that it doesn't work for me. Not anymore. And then I started to reconcile with my past and say, you know what? I better understand things now. Again, going back to mistakes you even made or all these other things, and you're saying, you know what? There's an innocence there. Because we're not born into this world being to become mean and hurtful and to betray people. It's part of our path that happens, part of karma. But six of ghosts with the six of cups is childlike energy. It's the inner child. As we grow up, we lose more sense of the inner child. We lose that innocence, do we not? And then we're told to be adulting. We're told to, to adult all the time. We're told to do all these things, to conform to this, conform to that. Do what uh, Bobby, Tom, Dick, and Harry are do doing, right? You know, and it's like, oh, wait a minute. What Bob, Tom, Dick, and Harry are doing doesn't work for me. Some of what might be they're doing might work for me, but not all of it. 
because we're all different. We're all different. You are not like anybody else on this planet. So there's this thing about, you know, I think it's Bruce Hornsby that sings a song, End of Innocence, right? But does it really have to be the end of the innocence? I don't think so. You can have a different opinion, and that's okay. You can have a different way of looking at it, and that is okay. I respect that too. But these hermit modes, guys, this week, you're really going to learn to reconcile with your past when you better understand why you went through the things you went through and knowing who you really, really, really are. This week is Know Thyself Week. It's Socrates Week for a lot of you. And that some, you still have some inner childhood wounds to hear, heal. It's almost like bringing peace to a situation. This ghost is giving this other ghost a flower. All right, we know in the writer wait, there's a, an older child giving a younger child a bouquet. A vase of flowers, right? You might even literally be getting some flowers. Who knows? Um, you could even be reconciling with somebody. Somebody could be coming out of hermit mode because they found the magic potion, okay? Oh, this is it. It might be smoking a little, but it didn't break the tube. It didn't break anything else. Nothing's on fire, if you look at all the animals and all the faces in here, smiling, smiling. The cat, I can't tell because it's just the eyes, but it looks like the cat's happy. Even the mouse has a smile on its face. He's got a crazy look. Even the pumpkin is smiling. We all know that these jack-o'-lanterns don't have these smiley faces. He has a smiley face. He is happy with what he has learned about himself. He, has, he is happy with what he has created. I now have the magical elixir. I now have the potion. Now I know what to do with it. And for that, for some of you, this is why this person, you're reconciling with somebody. Because someone from your past is coming back. They're coming out of hermit mode. You're coming out of hermit mode because you've done your inner child healing. You've reconciled with your past. You see the divinity in people and you're like, you know what? I've learned so much through being in solitary mode. It's going to be different for all of you because it's a collective reading. Okay. So you're being asked, some of you, to get into your cave to do some soul searching, to heal from your childhood wounds, to reconcile with your past, and to understand that everybody on this planet has some sort of glimmer of light in them that has to do with this innocence. That some people didn't do things on purpose to you it's like they say in court, innocent until proven guilty. Is anybody really guilty of giving you a poor childhood? Is anybody really guilty of betraying you, backstabbing you? Do you really think that where there was malintent there? And I know some of you are going to think I'm crazy because I can feel it, but I speak truth. And this is what God wants me to say. Because God does not create people to do that. Certain situations cause people to do that. Certain upbringings cause them to do that. Certain religions cause them to do that. We all know about divorce in some Christian religions, making you feel guilty about it, right? You can't do this. You can't do that. It's like, oh my God, I sinned. It's the worst thing ever. God's going to hate me. Absolutely not. When God told me about this whole sinning thing, like the other day, I asked God for forgiveness or something because I just had this one random thought. And I was like, oh man, I shouldn't have thought that. Where did that come from? I said, God... 
I'm sorry that I said that or I thought that. I'm sorry I sinned against you. And no joke, this is what he told me during meditation and prayer one morning. He said, my child, you did nothing wrong. Why do you think you sinned against me? You are entitled to have that thought. You are allowed to feel that way, to think that way, to say those things. It's not who you are. You are not living a life like that. And I was like, oh, shit. And he said, there's nothing to forgive you for, Jess. <laughs> you already learned your lesson from it. You just mentioned something. You just thought something and you let it go. So you are okay with me. You, you've gained the wisdom. So why are you asking for that forgiveness? Because like you know you've already been forgiven. All these other things, right? You know that you said that because you, you were reflecting upon something that you've learned from. Right? And we, religion causes a lot of guilt. A lot of shame. Yeah, we screw up. Yeah, we fuck up. Yeah, we make mistakes. But nobody's perfect. Virgo energy. Perfection is not your end goal. Nobody's perfect here. Now, for those of you who someone's coming back from your past, they want to reconcile with you. Okay? They want to let bygones be bygones. They've learned a lot through their downtime, your downtime, whatever. Soulmate. Divine counterpart energy, okay? Could be a friend, could be a sibling, whoever. If God is sending them back to you like a freaking prodigal son, it was meant to be, okay? But you should know, use discernment, use your wisdom that you've gained. When these people come back to reconcile, you should know deep within your heart whether they're genuine or not. But you still need to see the divinity in this person. Because even if they come back around and they're still not quite there yet or they're not ready to fully reconcile, like they want to come back and they want to, to make amends with you, but they, they fall off the grid again or they retract or something or they don't, they don't actually say they want to reconcile, you need to learn from that. Because I'll tell you this, my person came back to me several times. I've gone through several separations. And I thought every time we reunited, right? I thought it was going to be, oh, this is the final union thing. But it wasn't. God sent him back to me for a reason because it was like, okay, Jess, you were, you were in solitary mode. You, I put you back in hermit mode. What else are you learning? How are you growing? This is spiritual growth. Because every time your person comes back around, you could be going through tests. They could be going through tests. <coughs> are you going to throw the past back up in their face? Because if you're throwing the past back up in their face, you still have some healing to do. You didn't gain the wisdom you should have gained when they were away. The past is here to teach you. You're supposed to grow from it, not to get stuck in it. Not to let it ruin your life and dictate your life because that's poisonous. You keep going back to that past, what this person's done, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you know what? You haven't grown. You haven't evolved. You haven't gained wisdom from that experience. That's the cold, hard truth here. You still get triggered. You still want to put the past back in, into, into the thing, right? But here's the thing. If you keep complaining about it, if you keep saying, oh, my God, you know what, and, and it ruins your day, right? It makes your day a poisonous day. You're not happy. Even after the past comes back and something happens where it's like, okay, it's like I went through this this past weekend, okay? Stuff from my past resurfaced, and I was a little bit irked by it. 
And then I started to realize, wait a minute, you know what? God's teaching me something here. It could have ruined the night of my grandfather's birthday party. I could have been like, eh, eh. But this is, this is why I was telling you guys when I was asking God, like, God, I'm sorry I did that. He's like, no, 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 no. You didn't do anything wrong. You pointed something out and you realized something, but you said to yourself, you know, I have to move on. I can't let this get the best of me because guys, sometimes our past is going to resurface. But if we get into anger, right? It's like the reverse hermit. You're paranoid about something or, you know, you're antagonistic about something. You're not seeing the wisdom gained in this. You haven't grown spiritually. If you, when the past comes back, it turns you back into that other person that you were before. This is not spiritual growth. So when my person came back around every time, I didn't say, oh, now you're showing up. Oh, like you didn't answer my other text. Oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, why did you do this in the past? Why didn't you, did you do this? Why you, did you not do this? I didn't do any of that shit. Because during that time away, from my person, I was gaining wisdom. I was knowing stuff about myself, about him, about our relationship, my other relationships with other people, my life. So some of you, there's a reunion probably this week, this month, but again, don't bend, get bent out of shape about the timing of this. This person may come for a little bit some people come in for a season. Some people come for, you know, yeah, a season. They go away again and then they come back for another season. Others of you, they come in and that's it. If God sends them back to you, it is for a reason. But when you start to realize, okay, this person has an ulterior motive Okay, my intuition feels if that person hasn't changed for the better, then you are going to say, oh, yeah, it's nice that you're, I'm hearing from you again or whatever. And you start like, oh, man, this person is still lower vibrational. This person still hasn't changed. That's okay. You pray for them. You still see the divinity in them. You reconcile with the past. Like you don't be like get, get all bent out of shape because of it. You lower your vibration when you do that and you actually lose what you, you were supposed to gain from it. And if you say, oh, you know what? Yeah, you know, it's nice that you came back or whatever. It's nice to hear from you. But then you feel low vibes and you just kind of shut it down. But like nicely, okay? You're kind, you're sweet still. But you know that this relationship isn't going to progress that's okay. You let it fall away. But if you know this person comes back to reconcile, even if it's multiple times, and you see that they've changed every time you reunite, every time you come back together, then you let that be. You continue to learn, gain the wisdom from this. But there's somebody here where someone has really been doing a tremendous amount of soul searching and they're like, you know what? I found the magic potion. I know what to do. I'm happy with what I found. I'm happy with what I've learned. And now they're getting ready to come forward because they want to be part of your life again. They've been thinking about all these memories, all these very fun times with you. You guys would be like kids, like childhood friends. Maybe this is a childhood friend and you guys would be, you know, reminiscing about things. And it's like, you know what? I loved it when we did this. Like you made me feel like a kid. You allowed me to be a little bit immature because we're allowed to be a little bit immature, guys. I know for me, I can be immature. I tap into my inner child every now and again. It's healthy. So you could have a counterpart or a soulmate or whatever coming back saying, you know what? I'm reminiscing about all these times with you getting nostalgic, right? 
all the times that they made you happy. Look, okay, they're having me point out stuff. Every ghost here has a happy face. There are ghosts in here who don't have happy faces, okay? The Eight of Cups is one of them. And I don't think they're going to have me show up for a reason. But look, I'm not even hitting any of the Cups cards yet. This is very interesting. I saw the tower there. They're happy there. There's some ghosts that don't have smiles on their faces. Eight of Cups. Anyway, you get the point. <coughs> Everyone here has got a smile on their face. Everyone here has a smile on their face. They're reminiscing about those fun times where you brought that joy and that happiness to you. Which is why I was talking about what, what, what were those times that brought you joy, brought you happiness, the simple things, right? Maybe being alone with them. They loved being alone with you or something like that. And you had a great time together. And you allowed yourselves to kind of reminisce about things or you talked about your childhoods or you started to do things together that reminded you of your childhood, like listening to music or playing music or, you know, playing a particular game, watching a particular movie that you liked as a kid together. Things like that. Listening to music from the past, like something from the 80s, the 90s, the 70s, things like that. OK, I get music a lot because of ghosts. Water energy t for me tends to tie into music because it is tied to the water signs and <coughs> water signs for me that ties into music. But anyway, um, someone's really been reflecting a lot on all those really enjoyable times with you. And some of them allowed religious factors to get in the way, their childhood past to get in the way. They could have had traumatizing childhoods, guys. They could have had parents who weren't there for them or they didn't allow them to be kids. Then maybe the kids, they had to grow up too fast and they didn't have a childhood, kind of like a Michael Jackson type of thing. I've seen a lot of people who had to grow up really quickly when they were kids and they turned up to be these very serious adults or they, they didn't know how to have fun anymore. They didn't know how, what it was like to be a child. And then they don't tap into their inner child as adults and that that is not healthy so somebody here is realizing this and saying you know what i want to come back because i miss these times it was innocent it was nice it was genuine it was a peace offering here they really want to um come back because they want to create more memories with you because there were more happy moments with you than there weren't it's beautiful energy. It could very well be October. Halloween could be very significant for somebody here. You, your person. Where October, the fall, or Halloween tends to bring them back. It's like back to the future. But it's more like when Marty goes back to the past. Right? To change the future. I think that's back to the future part two. Right? Yeah, I think so. Um. I'm hearing blasts from the past. That's what I'm getting with Six of Cups. So somebody, there's a blast from the past. Someone's showing up all of a sudden or coming back out of nowhere. It's kind of like Eight of Wands too. But during this time frame, I'm getting very strongly for some of you. Fall, Halloween, October. They're remembering a certain event, certain events where you made them feel like home. You made them feel happy. You had a great time with them. Very fond memories. And they've been getting very nostalgic or they get very nostalgic during October, during Libra season, during the fall, during Halloween, whatever. Some date during this season, all right? And it's like, you know what? I don't want to be alone anymore. I don't want to be an introvert. I don't want to be hiding anymore because I love spending my time with this person. And I want more of that. And so for some of you, so because of this, they're coming back to you. And for some, they're coming to stay this time. The others of you, they're coming back into your life because this is part of your spiritual growth. And you're going to see them in a, in a better light 
because you've gained that wisdom, you're going to see the innocence in them, their divinity, because they're children of God. Six of Cups is a child card. How would you treat a child? Would you neglect them? Throw them under the bus? Do you keep bringing up the past with your kids? <laughs> That's for somebody. And sometimes people may bring up the past, but it's to get you to learn something too. Hey, remember back then? Remember when this happened? Look how much wisdom you gain. Look how, like, how far you've come. This is not about bringing up the past to belittle people, to chastise them, to throw them under the bus, to shove it in their face and make them feel like shit. This is not what the past is here for. You do that, you still have some work to do because you're still hurting. But somebody here is going to come back because they've learned a lot in solitude mode while they were by themselves and doing some serious soul searching. Understanding was important to them. Understanding that their past affected their lives. Their past dictated their future. This could be you too, right? You are starting to realize this. The whole point in this is wisdom. Being the sage. It's an enlightening moment. And when the past resurfaces, you're being tested to see if you have learned what you were taught. If you have learned what you found within. If you see things for what they are now, if you see it more clearly now, you regress, you lower your standards, you lower your vibration, there's still stuff that needs to be worked on heavily. If you look at the Bible, there's all types of stories about, we know the prodigal son, we know about, well, well, some of you should know about the prodigal son. The other one is Enoch and Elijah. Uh, <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of other ones. Even Simon Peter with Jesus. We know the whole story about, or most of us know about when Simon, uh, when Jesus was walking on the water and, and he called Simon to do the same and then Simon doubted it the last second. Simon Peter had a hard time with Jesus in some cases, more so than the other disciples. Simon kept going back to Jesus. Did Jesus throw the past in his face all the time or throw it like, um, you know, make him feel like shit because of it? No. Absolutely not. You have spiritually grown. We, you don't let the past affect you anymore. Because it was supposed to teach you something about yourself. You're either going to learn from it or you're not. If you decide not to really learn from it and stay stuck in the past, you're not going to grow. You're not going to evolve. You're not going to ascend much, if at all. Which means you won't be closer to alignment with your higher self or those things that you were really seeking within your heart space. Well, what do we have here? Top of the deck is the emperor. See what I mean? The divine masculine is ready to go. Another major arcana, Aries and Virgo. This full moon in Aries. <laughs> full super moon in Aries that we had September 30th really was the culmination here.
for this divine masculine to finally realize some things about himself, his personal power, his abilities, his confidence levels, his uh, leadership skills, to be able to be ready to take action to move towards the feminine, to reconcile with the feminine. Because after the Six of Ghosts, what will happen next is the Ace of Imps. The Ace of Pimps, as I call it. Not that your masculine's a pimp, but that's what I'm saying. They may feel like, you know, a little bit of confidence because if you really want to look at it, pimps used to have a lot of big dick energy, okay? I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I am. Maybe somebody's going to dress up as a pimp for Halloween or something like that. I don't know. Or you did. That's coming through, guys. It's not for everybody. The Ace of Imps is the Ace of Wands, okay? This has nothing to do with the devil because we have the devil in it, but... What I'm getting is that these toxic, devil-like, 3D, materialistic world energies that the devil represents, toxic situations, toxic jobs, help them. God took them out of that to put them into this um, cave to get them to gain that wisdom, to understand who they really are. And this goes for the feminines too. Your authenticity is the basis of your personal power. Your authenticity stems from you knowing yourself and going within to better understand who you really are and that you have all the power in the world to create the life that you want. You have all the power in the world to have a happy life. That is on you. You living a happy, fulfilled life, it's on you. The relationships included, it's on you. Not anyone else, not anything else it's you so there's a masculine here who's ready for a fresh start you see these chains around frankenstein's shoulders he kind of kept himself here on purpose so he couldn't escape he's like i really need to connect with god here There's a brain inside the vase of flowers. There's a lot of growth there. A lot of wisdom has been gained. And he's realizing, I want a fresh start with the feminine. I want a new beginning. And look, King of Pimps is here. Knight of Wands, King of Wands, Page of Ghosts, Page of Cups. I get strong Pisces with this because of the fish. Unexpected message of love, new beginning, opening their heart to you. They could very well be taking action. They're very high with energy. This full super moon in Aries really kickstarted this divine masculine collective for those who are aligned to be ready to reconcile with the feminine. And now they know what they're going to do when they come back. They found the magic potion. And some of them are going to come back and bring up some sort of memory. I've been saying this before. Hey, you know what? Um, like, and it's an anniversary. Oh, uh, you know, I, I remember this. I remembered that. Um, hey, I want to see how you were doing. Or um, this thing reminded me of you. So I thought I would say hello. It's me. I was wondering when you'd like to meet to go over everything. Right? Oh my God. Listen. Hold on. Um. Remember when she sings, when we were younger and free. In the lyric. Yeah, you listen to that Hello song by Adele. That's what I'm getting with the Six of Cups card. But that's why I said some of you, your masculine is ready. They're coming back for good because they bossed up. They've leveled up significantly. They've had to have this time away to get to here, guys. You can't get to the emperor level in a short period of time. And sometimes it takes several reunions and several coming back togethers to
to get them to get here. When you are in a true divine counterpart connection, the twin flamey stuff, okay, whatever you want to call it, but I call them light counterpart connections, divine counterpart connections, because this is a divine masculine. You come back together several times, and each time you're learning more about yourselves and each other and your other relationships in the world in general. And each time you are starting to level up, but that's only if you are learning from your past. And you're not throwing the past in somebody's face. They're not throwing it in your face, and you're not throwing it in the masculine's face. Okay? A divine masculine, divine feminine does not bring up the past and start, you know, um, uh, getting agitated and, 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 and bothered by it and angry. If they're going to bring up the past, I'm going to say, hey, you know what? I have a question about this. Like, can you enlighten me about this? Or I know I did this in the past, but I'm going to explain to you why that was. Here's what I'm hearing. There's a mask. They will bring up the past. Let them speak about it. The feminine should not be going back to the masculine because she's not a divine feminine Christ. If she starts asking the masculine questions about his past, why did you do this? Why did blah, blah. no, 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 no. That's a distorted feminine. That's out of alignment. What I'm hearing is that the masculine's going to bring up the past, but you guys are going to heal from the past. You're going to reconcile from that past, those past events, whatever, together. All right. But they're ready to come forward. And it's like, no, I chained myself on purpose. <clears throat> I needed to sit here and really contemplate about things. Huge contemplation mode. <clears throat> the hermit is when the emperor falls from grace. He loses everything. And he goes into this mode, how the hell did I go from being on top to being at the bottom? How did I go from being wealthy to having nothing? How did I go from being an emperor of a massive empire? It's like the fall of Rome and everything collapsing to rubble. This is what the hermit is. What am I going to do differently? What is really important in my life? Because the shadow side of a number could be someone who's addicted to money or someone who likes flashy things or, you know, they like to have control over every little thing. They're tyrannical. They get temperamental because the air is energy. Me, 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 me. It's all about me. This is the father card. You can't make it up, which is why I said some of you need to go back and reanalyze your connection with your father. Father figures, authority figures. Some of you might just have an issue with authority. Somebody here has like Saturn in the 10th house. <coughs> 10th house is the house of the father. Go check your 10th house. Okay. Why did I say some of you need to reconcile or do, or, uh, do some soul searching about your relationship with your father or grandfather, a father figure, your ex-spouse, the father of your children? Okay, <clears throat> might be the mother of your children. Okay, I will say that because it's masculine energy. It's not male energy. Some of you were dealing with women who were predominantly masculine and not feminine. All right, take it how it fits your story. But there's some strong father healing that some of you still need to do. Okay. And those of you who've done this, you gained a lot of wisdom from this. It's like, yeah, you know, they did that. They did this. Again, it could be a parent. <clears throat> For some of you, it is technically a father. Some father figure somewhere. <clears throat> Might even be religious figures because he kind of looks like the Pope to me too. Uh, the Hierophant. <laughs> Why do you think they did what they did? There's still some innocence there, right? 
And if there's something that had to do with the father, this is you reconciling that past. Say, you know what? Yeah, they did what they did. I got to move on. I'm not going to let it get the best of me. I know better now. I know better now. What's done is done. Let it go. But there is a masculine here who's ready to come forward. They know what they want, they want, and they're going to take action to get it. But here's the thing. The emperor gets what he wants. But that's because he knows what he wants now. It's not something that's fleeting. It's not he wanted control. He wanted money. He wanted status or whatever. And he's like, that's not what I want anymore. He's understanding what his true leadership role is as a divine masculine Christ to be the provider, protector of the home, the family, the feminine and the, and the physical. That's what his role is as part of the divine order. And that he just wants to be himself sometimes because here's a very serious person, right? It's a father. It's, it's, it's the mature person. It's a bossed up person. But the emperor is allowed to be a child every now and again, but not the one who throws temper tantrums and, and, and goes around in circles on the floor, like yelling and screaming or whatever, trying to get their way and stuff like that. No. Being a complete baby? No. Every now and again, the emperor can tap into his inner child and have fun. Do things that he loved to do as a child. Right? Video games, board games, whatever, right? Things like that. I still love video games. I still haven't hooked up my system yet, but that's besides the point. But um, I still love those things. I still love watching those old movies from childhood, like my Beauty and the Beast movies or my National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, which Christmas Vacation Christmas is coming up soon, so I'm going to start watching that. You get what I'm saying. <clears throat> Aladdin, right? Disney movie. You can be... A mature person, a divine masculine, and still do those kid-like things? Give me a break. If you're trying to get someone to be adulting all the time, no, you can't play video games, you can't be watching those movies, you get uh, 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 what? That's not a balanced life. These things from childhood that they love to do will help this person to be happy will help this person to in continue to enjoy their life because maybe some of those things got revoked, they got taken away. You got to allow people to tap into this Six of Cups energy, guys, this, this childlike energy. Things from their childhood or whatever from the past that they love to do. And when you restrict people of doing those, you're actually taking away their innocence. You're taking away what makes them happy. Why would you want to do that to anybody? Even if it seems mature for you, because right, because somebody here, again, I'm getting the video game thing. If you don't like video games, fine. But if this person does, why are you going to strip that from them? If it makes them happy, if it, you know, helps them to relieve stress or something. They're allowed to have fun. Just because you don't like video games does not mean your divine masculine shouldn't do them either. You go do your thing. Which is why if you're a true divine feminine in Christ, you're not going to get hung up on your masculine still playing video games when he's 47. 58. Okay? Let him be. You can still be a mature person and still tap into those childlike things. That's what God wants us to do. Society tells us that we shouldn't be doing those things anymore. That is bullshit. That's programming. Why are you watching Disney movies when you're 47 years old? Because I like them. I'm 43 and I still watch Disney movies. I'm 43 and I still love video games. I still love going to like Dave and Buster's and shit like that. Right? I love that stuff. I like saying crass jokes or whatever. Like very silly things. That's what keeps me young. 
That's what's going to keep these people young when they do these things that they love to do from their childhood. So why are you going to strip somebody of that? Some of you need to go back to doing things you used to love as kids, man. Like, stop being so serious all the time. This is not the time to get serious, like two of pentacles, like, oh, I don't know, going back and forth, oh, whatever, whatever. That's also the masculines no longer going back and forth and making this decision to come back from the past. God, this is like the freaking longest reading ever again, but hey, I don't give a shit because if that's what they want me to say, that's what they want me to say. Let's see what else we have. I'm telling you, like, I can go on for hours with this energy, but, you know, <clears throat> people who don't have the patience for these things, that's one thing they need to work on. <laughs> what else can you tell us, Holy Spirit, Archangels, with this hermit energy, whatever has been channeled so far? Please and thank you. Look, bossing up, leveling up, gaining strength, working out. Next step. Daily steps towards your dream. Manageable goals, mentorship, doors opening, success. So again, some of you need to be working on your inner childhood wounds, all right, with a spiritual teacher, with a mentor, all right, a spiritual guide. Childhood healing needs to be done for quite a few of you, or there's some father figure healing, right? Um, you know, I help with that. Because I've actually been able to do that on my own. <laughs> and it wasn't an easy thing to do. But I'm better for it. And it's a wonderful thing when you really, really, really start to understand why you've gone through those things and why those things had to happen. Because I know at the end of the day, what I learned from my father was for me to be more like that emperor energy, have confidence in myself, to trust in my leadership abilities, to trust in my own self to be who I am that I can be selfish sometimes there is such thing as a healthy selfishness taking daily steps towards your dream now the top of the deck is the um, uh, divine masking card but it's the emperor is more about being disciplined okay being more disciplined with your healing your childhood wounds your father issues, whatever this is. I did say some of you were like, oh man, you know, I keep exploding things in chem lab. Why am I doing that? Because some of there's, there's something about you may have gotten out of hermit mode. You stopped the soul searching. You didn't want to be alone anymore. So you went outside of that or you, you still had some things that you didn't want to really look within. Because when you do the deep soul searching, you find stuff that you don't want to see which is why I talked about the fears, okay? Take daily steps towards your dream. Do something towards manifesting those dreams. See what works. Do what makes you happy, right? The magical elixir of life. Knowing who you are and being yourself. Manageable goals, right? Don't be setting like all these goals and it's like, oh my gosh, like I couldn't achieve them or, you know, I'm a failure or, you know, um, just like set something. It could even be as simple as making your bed. It can be as simple as watering your plants every day. It can be as simple as making sure you have a uh, half an hour to yourself for your tea time. All right. If you've got like a YouTube channel or whatever, okay, I'm going to do these readings for this week and yeah, I accomplished these things. Success is the emperor card. Some of you, there's great success with you reconciling with your past of healing your inner child. When the past resurfaces, it doesn't take you backwards. And because of that, for some of you, doors are now opening for bigger, better things. Could even be doors opening for the masculine to now come in because you've learned your lessons. You've healed your inner child. You didn't get super caught up in nostalgia. Oh man, things were so much better back then. Things were better as a kid. Like that 1980 Me song by um, Darren Hayes. It's a fantastic song, guys. Go listen to it. Oh my God. Like me being a kid in the 80s was glorious, but I can't go back there. 
right? Even when I talk to my son about, man, Julian, if you could have been, lived life in the 80s, you would have been very different. But again, that's not his time period, right? God sent him to be born in the 2000s. So anyway, when you're not going back to things were better as a kid, I wish I was a kid again, right? I wish all these things, that life was easier. No, you're, you're getting caught up in that nostalgia stuff and then you're not moving forward. But, and then those doors won't open up for you because there's still something about like, you don't want to be serious, but right. Cause there's, there's a time to be serious and there's a time to not be a time to be disciplined, a time to not be all right. But you're still going to find those successes, even when you're doing the childlike things, because you're balancing out your life. If you look at this guy, he's lifting weights. They're the same Weights on both sides, right? We all know that when you're weightlifting, it's got to be the same uh, weights on either side of this barbell. And you know when you're doing strength training, you put one weight on there and then you add more as you get stronger, as you, 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 you build up daily steps we all know when we go to the gym you're not going to get ripped in a week two weeks even a month you're not going to bench press uh 200 pounds from the get-go when you haven't started from the bottom yet we all know how this works so there's a strong energy of mentorship which i was talking about that is hermit energy some of you are being asked to work with a spiritual guide a spiritual teacher a spiritual mentor someone who's gone through similar things that you did and they're here to teach you those things because they've done those things themselves. Those are your greatest teachers. Those who've been through this, those who've done this. It's the same thing with divine counterpart connections, working with mentors who were actually in the connection itself. Those who've been in hermit mode for a while, those who've gained a lot of wisdom from the connection who are here to teach you. They've gone through it so they can teach it, okay? There is something about some of you, again, you've been put in hermit mode. You've been doing a lot of work here. Um, it's like you've been hidden for a reason. God kept you away from everyone and everything. He kept you in the cave for a reason because for some, now it's your time to shine. Now doors are opening up. Because you're going to be ready for the big time is what I'm being told. It's the next next level for you. You're going to be bench pressing more weight. Because you're not going to be able to handle the weight. Mindfulness is at the bottom of the deck here. Awareness of thoughts without judgment. Meditate, breathe, yoga, being present in grace. Give yourself grace and give other people grace. Because God gives us grace too. Being in the present moment, not going back to your past and getting stuck there. And when the past resurfaces, you don't let it take you down. You don't let it lower your vibration. <coughs> Some of you need to literally meditate, breathe, do yoga. The meditation and contemplation with this hermit card. Um, maybe daily steps towards your dreams. Manageable goals with mindfulness. Being in the present moment, being at peace, paying attention to your breathing, okay? Not judging yourself when you have certain thoughts. This is exactly what I was talking about, what I did the other day. When the past resurfaced and I said something and I thought something and then I said, okay, I got to move on from this. Yes, I'm irked by this. Yes, it bothers me. Yes, it hurt a little bit. But what am I learning? What have I learned about this? And that's why I said, God, I'm sorry that I said, I thought that, that I said something, whatever. And God's like, why? Why are you judging your own self? Why are you thinking you sinned against me? Are you going back to religion, Jess? You thought that because I wanted, I brought that past up for you again to get you to realize how much wisdom you've gained, how far you've come, how much you've learned. And that's why God was like, 
why are you asking me for this? Awareness of thoughts without judgment. Religion tends to get us to judge us. Are, are we... Uh, Religion tends to get us to judge a lot about other people, but about ourselves and our thoughts. Oh, I had a dirty thought. Oh, I had this negative thought about something. Oh, I got angry for like a minute. I just sinned against God and I need to repent and I'm going to go to hell and this, 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 this. And God's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're a human being. As long as you aren't having those quote-unquote sinful thoughts in your brain for hours and days and months on end where you actually live it out, that is where you got to do some serious work. <coughs> okay? Don't judge yourself when you have whatever thought, especially if it's not so good. Others, if you need a mentor to work on these things. To work on the awareness of thoughts without judgment. To work on how to meditate. How to do breath work. I teach pranayama too. Go do yoga. I don't teach yoga, but you can go look that up. Learn how to be in the present moment. Learn how to be See yourself as graceful, but to also give others grace. Give yourself grace and give others grace. Some of you need to learn from someone about these things. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Trust the process. Everything always works out. Something better is on the horizon. Have total confidence in the universe. Being love, exude love in all that you do. Oneness, like attracts like, unconditionally loving the self and all. All right, we're going to get a an oracle card from my star into your power oracle deck. If you guys need some daily guidance instead of weekly guidance, or you want to get additional messages throughout the week as opposed to the weekly messages i highly recommend that you sign up for a capella membership all tiers include daily guidance readings um a lot of the tiers have seven day free trials okay so you can go to capellawellness.com check out the capella memberships or check out the description box below for the links to that and you can even check out my other services my tarot packages those types of things but if you're looking for, you know, to get guidance on a daily basis, because I don't do that on YouTube. I leave that for my paid memberships for a reason. Um, to help supplement what you get from this, I highly recommend um, you at least trying out for seven days a membership and see how that might work for you. That could be part of your mentorship, okay? You don't, if you don't, if you feel like you're not ready to work one on one with me, because I know sometimes I can call bullshit on people, but that's what I'm supposed to do because I genuinely care about your success, about you gaining that mastery and you becoming that sage, all right? You healing from your past, all these things. But if you're looking more for mentorship, right, with a membership, you can get a Capella membership and that can be part of your. Daily steps towards your dream, part of your mentorship process to, to, to help you to be more successful in life, but to success to find how to, to achieve success based off of how God defines it, not man. Okay. You want to be more mindful, you want to be more in the present moment, you want to learn how to meditate, breathe, whatever. I don't really teach that stuff in my daily guidance readings. That's my other readings, my other benefits from my other memberships, but you get the point. To help you with this, you can very, very well benefit from a Capella membership if you're just getting daily guidance videos for the lower tiers, okay? Don't knock it till you try it is what I keep hearing. So let's see what the guidance is for today. See, I'm already thinking I'm doing my membership readings. <laughs> for the week, Holy Spirit, what is the guidance for the week? For uh, Oh, <laughs> please and thank you. Thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your support, and your clarity, Holy Spirit, and the Archangel. See, be understanding. 
I don't need to say anything else, guys. If you need to rewatch this video, go ahead and do it. Be understanding when this person comes back or they want to reconcile. It could be anybody. For some of you, it is your divine masculine. A true divine feminine Christ is going to be very understanding of the masculine for being away so long. It's like that song, Far Away by Nickelback. Listen to that song. There's a very important message for some of you there. If you are a true divine feminine Christ, you would be very understanding as to why your person would come back and come back and come back. I already talked about this. Rewind the video. A true divine feminine Christ will be very understanding about if you've been going through your hermit mode, they had to go through their hermit mode too, right? You can't come into permanent union without both of you being in solitary mode. Because God won't be able to do the greatest work on you if you're not in here. You can't grow, learn, and evolve without the hermit phase in the hero's journey. That is a very long phase to enlightenment. Some it takes nine years. Some it takes less. Some it takes more. But that's God's doing because that is a major arcana. All right? The divine is all up in this. So if God says someone needs to be in solitary mode for a certain amount of years, so be it. And it's going to be different for how long the feminine's in solitary mode. Okay? Be understanding of these people. You will be better off you will be able to be more compassionate and understanding and forgiving when you spend a lot of time soul searching. Don't compare yourself to others. What did I say about other people's journeys? What did I say about other people's hermit modes? What did I say about, oh, the potion that works for one person doesn't work for the other person. The potion that works for me isn't going to work for them. The potion that works for them isn't going to work for me. What I've learned about myself, how I'm going to follow my purpose, how I'm going to achieve my purpose, how I'm going to achieve my dreams, right? How I'm going to achieve success is not going to be defined the same way as somebody else. As I said, we're all different people. And what I say here, it's supposed to give you some sort of context. It's supposed to give you some sort of guidance. Okay? It's guidance from God. Some of it will apply to you and it will work for you. Other stuff may not. Some of you, it, you will get it and be like, you know what? Let me tweak this. Let me go add more of these drops of whatever. I don't know why I'm hearing cyanide these things to see if this works better for me. I said one size, this is not a one size fits all thing, guys. That's why when you're watching collective readings, some of you are going to be like, oh, my masculine is coming back. But are you in alignment with it? Have you been in hermit mode several times? Are you doing the inner child work? Are you still stuck in the past? Are you sitting around waiting for your person to come back when you haven't achieved your own goals? This is why mentorship is so important. This is why even with the Capella memberships that I have, it'll help you. But one-on-one -on -one mentorship will give you the most value. Because we will work together to get you to manage those goals. Because everybody's goals are different. Everybody's dreams are different. Everybody's end uh, result is different. So make sure you're not going out there comparing yourself. I'm going to be completely honest. Every now and again, I find myself doing this. Especially with the work I do. And let me tell you, when I said, oh my God, this is going to be a long reading, 
I do long readings. A lot of people don't watch these because it's so long. But I have to remember that. Uh-oh. I have to remember that I have a different purpose. I have to remember this is me. If God is telling Jess to do the readings this long, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I have to trust in what God wants me to disseminate. I have to trust in what God wants me to do with my mission work. And I have to pull myself back out and say, no, Jess, this is you. You're not like other people. You're not like other mentors. You're not like other spiritual guides and spiritual teachers. You are very different than everybody else. Just because they're having more success than you doesn't mean you won't get there. And that's my definition of success. Oh, well, they seem to be doing better. I actually realized something the other day about a reader. And I thought that that person was doing, that person was always doing better than my channel until that person said something. There were health issues. There were lots of other issues going on in that person's life. And I said, whoa, I don't have any of that. That was success to me. Not to knock on that reader. But God put something in perspective. He says, see, Jess, not all that glitters is gold, especially when you're doing this stuff. So make sure you're not comparing yourself. This is also for the masculines watching this. You're not like other masculines. You're not like other people. You got to be you, which is why knowing thyself is so important. Be you. Be who you are. It's, 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 I said this so many times. This is exactly what my masculine told me. You will feel so much better in life when you realize that. Well, there it is. Someone's about to contact you. The energy is getting rom romantic. Yes. I didn't say that by accident. There is a little bit of romance here. Hey, sweetheart. What's wrong? What's wrong? Okay, hold on. I'm going to stop this. Go ahead, go to bed. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. Huh? Is it everywhere? It's Go lie down here. Come here. Can you walk here? Yeah, there's some tissues there. Okay, guys, I'm going to have to go. My son is not feeling well at all. Bottom of the deck is breathe. Okay? Just breathe. Faith Hill. Listen to that song, too. Okay? Um, but, yeah, that's why someone's about to come back around to contact you. Um, there's going to be other stuff for this reading, but... Uh, my son, I need to take care of my son right now. So, um, there you have it. Okay. If you want, a affirmation, I am capable of setting boundaries. Yeah. Be the emperor mode. All right, guys. All right. I'm gonna have to cut this short. So hopefully this enlightened you. Um, thank you so much for watching this video, for subscribing to this channel. If you haven't already for illuminating that thumbs up button. I greatly appreciate it. I wish you the best and always. I send you so much love and I hope I illuminated your well-being today. Again, this is Jess from Capella Wellness. Starring out.